What is going on guys, I'm Adriano and this video is going to be about how to read multiple CSV files from AWS S3 using Python with the AWS Data Wrangler library. So as you can see here, I'm in my S3 bucket within my animal underscore locations underscore partition folder. And what you can see is we have a lot of different folders under this and each folder has a CSV file. So with one function from the library, we're able to actually read all these files. So as you can see here, my data is partitioned by date and each one of these folders has a CSV file in it. So let's head over to my Jupyter Notebook to see how to do this. So in this video, I'm going to cover the most important parameters you're going to want to use from the read underscore CSV function to do this. So our first step is to import AWS Data Wrangler. So I'm just going to do that. And now as you can see here, my next two lines of code is just, just set my S3 bucket directory and file locations. So I've passed my S3 bucket name and then I pass the directory of the folders underneath that. And then I've just read it together as a one string and kept score path variable. Now in order to run the read underscore CSV function, all we need to do is pass the path of our S3 folder, which has the CSVs that we want to run. This is the only mandatory parameter you need to use. And there's a bunch of optional ones, which I'll cover in a second. If we run our function to read our CSV, as you can see in my console, I get all of my records. And what's nice is this is actually scanned over every single partition and pulled it into one view. As you can see, we have 9,000 rows and five columns coming into our data frame. So when we use this function, it actually reads your data as a pandas data frame. And the nice thing about this is you can now do other transform operations that you're used to doing in pandas as you see fit. Now let's say you have a lot of other files in this directory and you only want to pull in your CSV files. That can be handled with a path underscore suffix parameter. So I'm just going to do path underscore suffix equals list and it's just going to be dot CSV. So if I would run this, as you see here, it would only pull the CSV files and not throw an error with other files that are trying to be read into it. There's also a parameter to enable concurrent requests. This can be handled with the use underscore threads parameter. So if I do use underscore threads and we set that to true, now this is going to allow us to do concurrent requests. Now Data Wrangler authenticates using your credential file on your machine. And by default, it's using that default credential. So if I pass the Bodo3 underscore session parameter, I can pass in a different set of credentials. Now let's say your data has millions of records and you don't want to pull it all into a single data frame as it might be too memory intensive. We can actually limit the amount of rows coming into our data frame by using the chunk size parameter and setting that to how many records we want to chunk by. So I'm going to set that to 500. And now if I give this a run here, what you're going to see is I get an object coming back. So if I actually want to print this to my console now, I have to change my print statement I need to do for data frame in raw underscore df. And now I can just do print df. Now if I run this, what you're going to see here is I'm now getting this chunked out in multiple data frames. And it will keep going and going and going. Now one thing you might have noticed is that my partition column is not actually appearing in my data set. So in order for us to get this to appear, we need to set data set is equal to true. Now if I give this a run here, if I print my data frame out again, and give this a run, now what you're going to see is this date column now appears. Now where is this date coming from? Well, if we go back to our S3 console, as you can see the partition set on the folder itself. So it's actually reading this in and assigning it to our data frame column, which is awesome. Okay, now let's say if your directory has millions of records and you're saying, Adriano, you know, I don't want to read in all of this data. I only want to read in a single partition or maybe two partitions. How do I do this? Well, that can be handled by the partition underscore filter parameter. So once we leave data set as true, this will allow us to pass in this another optional parameter called the partition filter. So if we do partition underscore filter here, and it will accept a Lambda function for that filtering. So I'm just going to make my partition filter here. So partition underscore filter, and I'm going to set it to Lambda X X date. In, I'm going to pass in one of the dates, so it's going to be 2021-0301. And for fun, let's add another one here. Great, so now I've just made my Lambda function. So it's only going to return data for these specific dates. So I'm just going to make sure I pass this partition filter to my variable here. Now if I did that right, this should print. 
All right, there we go. And now if you see, we only get 1,125 records versus that 9,000 from that entire data set. As I mentioned earlier, you know, what this is returning here is a pandas data frame or a union of multiple pandas data frames as an object if you're passing in the chunk size parameter. I hope this video was helpful and you now know how to read multiple CSV files from AWS S3 using AWS Data Wrangler. And as you can see here, this can be done with one line of code. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. See you next time.